Hey guys, so I am in a different setup today. I normally film in my office, except the second I put my face on today, my neighbor across the street decided he needed to take all the tires off his car directly outside of my window. And it's hot. Like we don't have the air conditioning on because it's not that hot, but like hot enough that like if I close the window, I'll die, especially with the ring light. So we're in my room right now. I'm in this really cute chair, but like because of how it's set up, you can't see it. Also, there's a mirror here. <sighs> but yeah, you're just gonna have to deal with this setup for this video and probably the next, I'm trying to film three in a row right now. So like pray for me. But if you didn't see, Gabby is back. So I posted a video, I've been following her series. I posted a video when she posted her, you know, recent thesis about how everything in her life is awful and, um, you know, where she plays the victim and underplays her own narrative, her own role in all of these stories. But she did say that she was going to continue posting the series and here we are. She has posted two videos about Jesse Smiles. Um, they are very long and there's a lot to go through. So I'm going to tackle them one by one. I'm going to talk about her first Jesse Smiles video today called Smiles for the Camera. Um, tomorrow I will upload a video about her second Jesse Smiles video. And then I'm also going to film a video about Alex James, his lies, why Gabby cares and what that matters. There's just so much to cover. I just feel like it makes more sense so that I can be the most comprehensive to cover it separately. So let's talk about smiles for the camera. But first, if you are new here, subscribe to my channel. I upload twice a week, sometimes more. It kind of just depends how I'm feeling. Um, so yeah, you should stick around. I do commentary videos here. I kind of do hair videos sometimes in curvy girl fashion as well, but it's mostly commentary with some other stuff sprinkled in. And like I said, I will have more videos on Gabby coming up. So she covers a lot in this video and kind of jumps all over the place. So I tried to like bunch things together based on topics. So one of the main points Gabby makes in this video is that before Ga before Jessie posted her uh, Gabby Hanna needs to be stopped video in November of 2019, Jessie Smiles said they were good. They were on good terms. She said it in a previous video and I believe she said it via text to Gabby. So Gabby says, you know, me and Jessie were on good terms and look what she did to me. She posted this video out of nowhere for views just to hate me because it was popular to hate me because it was right after Trisha posted her video and that, you know, Jessie is basically a backstabber who smiled in Gabby's face, told her that they were good and then turned around and posted this video that has ruined her life. I know it's a lot to take in and it's kind of wild to sit and watch this video. I literally texted my best friend when I was watching it and was like, this video is unhinged. Like just to see how truly disconnected Gabby is from everyone else's perception of the situation is absolutely wild to me. I went into watching the series not knowing anything about Gabby and really trying to give her the benefit of the doubt time and time again, but the more videos I watch, it's very clear that Gabby's perception of events is not how everyone else perceives it. And I understand that's her view, but like she also needs to maybe think that if everyone else sees things one way, maybe they are that way. Because this point makes no sense. Sure, you were on good terms. You guys were good. Um, Jesse said it in the videos, she had texted it to you and everything was fine. And then Jesse did subtweet you know, if you're a shitty person, people are gonna find out. Because here's the thing, Jessie probably said you were good not to be a backstabber, but because uh, she didn't wanna go on camera and say, I fucking hate Gabby Hanna. She was like, you know, we're being civil to each other, but like, that doesn't mean that she fully forgives you for everything that you've done to her. And guess what? People can change their opinion. And Jessie was good with you. <laughs> I didn't film this video until you DM'd a fan. A fan said you were an R word apologist, you DM'd her, asked her for evidence, and started sending private messages about from Jesse and Jen Den to this fan, spreading lies, saying Jesse was crazy, and going on and on and talking privately to a fan about Jesse's mental state. <laughs> and that's why Jesse made the video. Like, I don't understand why that fact is not like 
comprehending in Gabby's brain. Because Gabby says like, oh, I've apologized a million times for this. And she may have apologized in her video, but if you've listened to the phone call, Jesse literally says in the phone call, like, you didn't apologize, you've never apologized to me for this. And then when Gabby does apologize, she says like, well, I apologize, but, and throughout her entire series, she keeps talking about how she, it's just talking to a person or DMing a fan. But what she doesn't understand is that like, there is no reason to DM a fan and shit on Jesse Smiles. The fan was asking about you supporting Curtis, not about your relationship with Jesse Smiles. It was about you supporting Curtis. And yeah, sure, I can understand you DMing her and trying to explain your case, but you dragged Jesse into it and she didn't need to be in it. Like you didn't need to send private text messages from Jesse Smiles. You didn't need to send private text messages from Jen Dent saying Jesse was crazy. You didn't need to tell this girl about Jesse's meds. Like this had nothing to do with the situation. Yeah, sure, Curtis has something to do with Jesse. That's the situation that started this all. But the situation of you supporting Curtis has nothing to do with your relationship with Jesse post haste. Like it has to do with the fact that you and Jesse were friends, which we've uh, has been shown as fact. And then you heard him out, which we didn't know at the time, supported him on Twitter and took pictures with him that everyone saw. So like, I don't understand how, like Gabby says she understands what she did was wrong with the fan, but then I think she just says that because she knows she's supposed to say it because then time and time again throughout the video, she keeps undercutting it and say she's just talking to somebody or just DMing a fan. But it was more than that. Jesse doesn't give a fuck that you talk to this girl about the accusations against you. She cares that you dragged her into it and started spreading lies about Jesse to this girl who you don't even know. And that begs the question of how many other times you've done it before, because you can say you only did it the one time, but like, if you've done it once, why wouldn't you've done it more? So like, I think it's important to notice that like, note that like, Jesse did not do this out of nowhere, Gabby. It was based on your own actions, which I think is a huge contention point for Gabby is she keeps being like, people say I start drama, but I've never started any of this. But like, you have, you attacked Rachel Oates after she posted a video, you DM'd the fan, which caused Jesse to post the video. Then you did a BuzzFeed article where you said that Jesse Smiles owed you a fucking apology, so she posted the phone call. You're the one that went on Twitter or on Instagram stories talking about if you would tell someone if they had herpes, dragging Trisha's drama into it. And although you may not have mentioned Trisha, you still publicly talked about it, which forced Trisha to make the video. So like all of these things, Start with you. You are the catalyst to all of these things. Like you start drama and then people defend themselves and then you defend yourself and say, I can't believe that these people started drama against me. But like, that's not what happened. So yeah, she says the video ruined her life. But like, I think what really ruined her life was the fact that she DM'd this fan and the fact that she refuses to admit that she is an R word apologist. What's funny to me in this whole situation really is that what Gabby Hanna did originally is not the worst thing in the world. I don't think it's unforgivable. Yes, victim blaming is absolutely trash, but this was years ago, it was back in 2014. We have to just acknowledge that as a society, we did not believe victims back then. I mean, it's still going on to this day. So I don't think what Gabby did was unforgivable. Clearly Jesse forgave her when they were friends, so when people call her an R-word apologist, all she has to do is say, yeah, I was an R-word apologist and it's absolutely awful and I'm so sorry for what I did. I've apologized to Jesse and I will keep apologizing because I will forever be sorry for defending what he did. Um, and that could have been the end of it. People would have moved on. Jesse could have corroborated that you didn't choose Curtis. However, then you went on to be at events with him and take pictures with him and then hear out his side of the story. So like, <laughs> like in her phone call, Gabby says, you will never convince me that I'm an R word apologist. And Jesse's like, but, but you were like, you apologized to me for doing that. So like, just because you apologize does not mean that it didn't happen again. She also talks a lot about all the hate she got from the video and she talks a lot about, you know, Jen Dent posted this and Jen Dent posted that and it's like, okay, listen, Jen Dent has 12,000 followers on Twitter. She is a small ass platform on Twitter. And I think, I think that Gabby is just the kind of person that internalizes all of the hate she gets. Like she said later on in the video that she had a mole on her face that she got revo removed because she saw one negative comment about it. And that just shows me exactly the kind of person that Gabby is. And like, listen, I can understand being insecure, but 
if you're gonna be an internet personality, you can't let the outliers get to you. And I think that like, you know Jen Dent is friends with Jessie, so like she's never gonna be on your side. So like talking about all the hate she got makes, I just feel like it wasn't that much hate originally, especially before the video. And again, the only reason there was hate after the video was because you refused to take accountability for what you did. She also makes some baseless claims saying that Jen Dent doxxed her friend, her ex and like platformed her abuser and harassed her. But throughout the video, Gabby does this thing where like she'll post up receipts when she has them. But then like sometimes she just doesn't post receipts. <laughs> and like if you're not like she said in the beginning of the series that this was all going to be about her posting receipts and telling her side of the story with proof and evidence but like there has been very little proof and evidence all gabby has done is shown text messages and tweets that she has decided are about her and has decided mean one thing when they're really just sub tweets and like kind of close to that thing but like it's just her perception of it is the law apparently so yeah, she shows no proof of this, which like I obviously would totally condemn if Jen Dent did that, but without proof of that, like Gabby is the most unreliable narrator that has ever lived. Gabby also makes the point that like in one of Jessie's videos, she talks about how their friendship was toxic and how they really hurt each other. And apparently Gabby's like really upset about that, which makes no sense because they agreed in the phone call that they did both hurt each other. And like, I can understand Gabby being upset if she was like, Gabby hurt me immensely and she was awful and toxic. But like, the way Jesse talks about it is that they were both toxic to each other and they both hurt each other and it was just not a good friendship. And like, I think that's a very mature way to speak about it. Like, she's taking her own accountability while saying like, Gabby was mean to me, I was mean to Gabby, blah, blah, blah. So like, I don't know why we're bringing this up. And then the most ridiculous part in all of this is that Gabby Hanna says that her and Jesse weren't even really that good of friends. <laughs> do, do you know what I'm referencing here? She literally says, I barely knew this girl multiple times because they were only friends for like five to seven months, even though Jess, Gabby and them, Gabby and Jesse were close enough that they were going to move in together. Uh, they were only friends for like five to six months and five to seven months and hung out with each other all the time. We're going to move in together. But like, she barely knew her. Are you? <laughs> Trisha Paytas, Trisha, Trisha Paytas, do you hear this? Like the fact that Gabby's entire beef with Trisha is the fact that Trisha says, I don't know this girl. And Gabby said we were friends. And then Gabby's gonna turn around and say that she called Jessie her best friends, but I barely knew her. We were barely friends. Like I, I, the hypocrisy is outstanding. Like the fact that really, she really decided to do that is ridiculous and I think why she's doing that is so that she can say like well me talking to Curtis is fine because I barely knew Jesse. we weren't even that good of a friend so try to like underplay the fact that what she did was awful because she defended Curtis and also heard him out after the fact um so like why <laughs> So I think that's what her game plan is, you know, but she's not manipulative at all. So it's probably totally not about that. They probably just like weren't really friends, even though they call each other best friends. But uh, yeah, that happened and my mind was blown. Then she talks a lot about how Jessie is out to get her. You know, she's turned people to like, get her. And the most ridiculous part about this section of the video, the most disgusting part and the part that made me realize that Gabby Hanna will never understand. There is no one that could ever make Gabby Hanna understand what sh what is wrong because she kept saying like, why is Jessie doing to this, this to me? Why? What did I ever do to her? And she said, and I quote, because I hurt her feelings in 2015 because I talked to a girl about it. Okay. You didn't just talk to a girl about it. You sent private messages shitting on Jessie to this girl. You also didn't just hurt her feelings in 2015. You heard out the man who assaulted her and acted like it was no fucking big deal. That's what you did, Gabby. You were supposed to be her friend and I don't care if your friendship fell out. You're supposed to be this woman who talks about how the media mistreats women and you hate misogyny. And then you're out here listening to an R word. You're listening to Curtis. Like, I don't care how you fell out. There are lines you don't cross and that's a line you don't cross. And how about the fact that you have made about 10 hours of content forcing Jessie to relive her trauma 
over and over again while you say that it's Jessie's fault you have to talk about her R word. Like, first of all, no, it's not. You're the one that keeps re-traumatizing her and doing your fucking series and trying to prove your point when like your point doesn't exist. There is no point. Also in this section, she talks a lot about how nobody fucked with Jesse. She talks about it a lot throughout the entire video, how nobody fucked with Jesse, and she was one of the only people that stuck by Jesse's side and she had to, you know, forego so many Vine collabs and friendships and not talk to other people because they fucked with Curtis and she fucked with Jesse. And it's like, do you want a fucking gold star? Do you think you're a martyr because you chose your friend over an R word? Like, it doesn't make you special. You don't get brownie points for being a bare minimum good human for a minute of your life because you went back on that, let's be real. Like, yeah, sure, it may have been detrimental to your career, but imagine what Jessie was going through watching everyone in her fucking community side with her, side with Curtis over her, and you won a fucking gold star because you picked the right side. Meanwhile, you went back on it later. Meanwhile, you refused to admit that you did it later. Like, it's so disgusting that Gabby is trying to position herself as this fucking heroic figure because she chose Jesse and lost so much because of that. Like, get fucked. You're not that special. That doesn't make you a good person. And the fact that you're dragging this out right now and trying to use it as some point in your favor shows how awful of a human you are. Like, yeah, okay, you did the right thing six years ago and now you're telling everyone that you barely knew this girl and you then heard out Curtis because he's a human who deserves to be heard. Disgusting. There are, do you think Ted Bunny deserves to be heard? You wanna go talk to him about what he did? Like, he committed a crime, he is convicted of this crime, he hurt your friend, and he does not deserve to be heard. The only person that deserves to be heard is Jesse, because it's her story and she's the victim and she's the person that deserves to be heard, not Curtis. And it's also interesting that Gabby has gone on to private that video that she posted because it wasn't supposed to be a part of this series. Uh, well, she unlisted it so you can still watch it, but like, let's be real, the only reason she unlisted it was because she, know it, she knew it didn't go over well because that's the last video she posted before she stopped posting her series. And it's not because she got too involved in it, it's because she, she literally proved herself to be an R-word apologist in that video by saying that she had heard out Curtis and that he deserved it. She also a lot, like a lot of the time throughout the video calls Jesse a liar. She's like, Jesse's entire video, the Gabby Hanna needs to be stopped video is full of lies. But never one time does she tell you what the lies are. Even in her next video, she goes through the entire video and like barely tells any what the lies are. So like, <laughs> there's no proof. Again, she nitpicks on little things like her and Curtis having a phone call versus meeting in person, which like is not important. All of the other facts remain the same. You heard out Curtis. You said he was a person. You defended him originally. Like, what more do we need? So then she finally goes through and discusses what happened when the TMZ article broke. She admits to posting tweets in support of Curtis because she had preconceived notions of Jesse being a social climber. Um, which like, why was this so hard? Why did this take this long? And why is it when people call you out for it on Twitter, you all of a sudden are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I think it's because people say that she chose Curtis over Jesse, which isn't necessarily true, but it's because people didn't know the timeline. So like, you're not not an R word apologist. You're just not as bad of an R word apologist as people thought you were originally. I mean, now you're worse because you did hear out Curtis, which we didn't know before. <laughs> The whole thing but like also people saw that you fell out with jesse and they were posting pictures with curtis so they assumed that but like gabby can't wrap her head around how people got to this instance even though she literally admits that she defended curtis when it all went down she then goes to this weird timeline of stuff about how like jesse was mean to her and like i'm just like this isn't drama again in one i'm not here to cancel people for being bad friends you guys have both said you had a toxic relationship. Jesse has admitted to hurting you. You have admitted to hurting her, well, vaguely. So like, I I don't care. I'm not even gonna go through that stuff because like, if Jesse was a bad friend, okay, maybe that's true. First of all, you have no receipts. Second of all, you're Gabby Hanna, so you are the girl who cried wolf now. And third of all, why do I care? Like, Jesse being a bad friend to you has nothing to do with this. That doesn't give you the right to talk to and hear out Curtis because Jesse was mean to you. Grow up.
She also then discusses how Jesse planted the seeds of her being an R-word apologist, but then <laughs> this is this is at the pinnacle of Gabby Hanna. She says Jesse may not have ever said that I was an R-word apologist, but she planted the seeds of it. And then she posts tweets on the screen. One tweet from Jesse and the rest are from Jen Dent, and none of them say that she was an R-word apologist at all. In one, Jesse in one, Jesse calls her a backstabber, and in one, Jen Dent calls her a ladder climber, but like Neither of those, first of all, neither of the tweets in general are related to Curtis. And second of all, that is not proof that she planted any fucking seeds. People have eyeballs. They followed your friendships. They saw you fell out. They saw you hung out with Curtis after the fact and they put the fucking pieces together. Jesse did not plant a single seed. And you have no evidence of this because the evidence you posted was a reach. She then claims that Jesse blackmailed her. This is again, I'm talking about these points right now because they show you how Gabby's perception of the world is. So she says Gabby blackmailed her because she posted a video and Gabby and Jesse reached out to her and was like, some of the video, some of the stuff you said in this video is not accurate. It was like a story time about her or something. And she was like, so if I need you to take, you either need to take down the video or I'm going to have to respond, which like is not blackmail. It's not. <laughs> That's not extortion, that's not blackmail, that's just saying, hey, your video is full of lies, and if you don't take the video down, I'm gonna have to post my side of the story with my screenshots and evidence. And Gabby's like, blackmail! It's just like in the first video when she talked about the phone call and she said that Gabby, or that um, Jesse blackmailed her into the phone call by saying, we need to have this phone call or I'm gonna have to make a video because I feel like I need to tell my side of the story. And Gabby was like, I'm not in the mental state for this, this is blackmail, but like, Gabby was or Jesse was so fucking nice in her comment in her texts like what do you want from this girl literally what Gabby wants from this girl is for her to bend over backwards say that Gabby never did a single thing wrong to her say that Gabby is not an r-word apologist and that Gabby is the perfect human being who has been criticized and assaulted online for absolutely no reason which is all a lie that's what she wants so then she talks about VidCon and the whole like um part where Jesse basically said she was gonna fight her what happened was Jesse reached out to her and was like, hey, we should like get food or something while we're here. And then just and then later that night, Gabby was at a party and Gabby said like, people were like, oh, Jesse was looking for you. And Gabby was like, oh yeah, I was looking for her too. And they were like, no, like she's mad. She wants to fight you. And Gabby was like, I don't know. She just like texted me for food. We were good. And then she wanted to fight me. But like in Gab, like, did you even watch Jesse's video? In Jesse's video, Jesse said that in between texting her for food and the voice note, she met up with one of her ex-boyfriends, not Curtis, and he said that Gabby had reached out to him to do an expose video on Jesse, and that's why Jesse was pissed. That's why Jesse sent that message like, if I ever fucking see you again, I will fight you because you're fucking ridiculous. Keep my name out of your mouth. Which, like, honestly, like, I realize violence is not the answer, but I also understand her response of being like, I was literally ready to squash this with J Gabby and just, like, be cool or whatever. And then I find out that she's still out here fucking in the background trying to spin shit to make videos with other people who are my exes. Like, what the fuck is that? And again, this is just how Gabby spins things. Gabby likes to leave out information. She leaves out receipts when they don't work for her. She leaves out information when it doesn't look for her because she's trying to make Jesse look crazy and be like, look, she said we were good and then she went back on it. And the same thing with the video. And like, that's not what happened. And so Gabby's main thesis of this video, yeah, she has a thesis, is that Jesse wants to be an entertainer and she's trying to ruin Gabby's life because Gabby has the career that Jesse wants. Can you imagine anyone wanting Gabby's career right now? Like, first of all, Gabby is not Ariana Grande. I'm not saying she's a bad singer. I'm just saying she's an indie singer. She puts music out online. She has a small record label. Like, Jesse was doing that before too. Jesse did has posted music videos on her. I listened to her song. It wasn't bad. Um, and like, she could do that if she wanted to do that. Like, no one's stopping her from doing that. And it's just such a ridiculous statement to make. With again, absolutely no receipts. And that's where we are. I just like <sighs> watching the video and watching the mental gymnastics that Gabby has to do in order to prove her points and get somewhere is ridiculous. She leaves out so much information. She refuses to take any accountability for starting any dramas ever. And she is just like a hot mess. <sighs> I watched a lot of Gabby Hanna today and yesterday and like my brain 
is mush. Is the series over now? I hope it's over now. So that was her first video. That was the video that was supposed to be the first video about Gab about Jessie from her series. Jessie Smiles, Smiles for the Camera, chapter 6.1. And I don't think it did what Gabby thinks it did. Like it just it just didn't. She made no points. Jesse has already debunked so much of the stuff she said. Nobody believes that Jesse was a liar. Sure, maybe Jesse was a bitch to her in the past, but like I literally don't care. Because since then you have weaponized and abused her own trauma over and over and over again and decided that it was your trauma, called her an abuser, heard out Curtis, said he's a human being, DM'd fans. Like you have done so much catastrophically awful shit that I don't care if Jesse was a bad friend to you. This is not, we're, this is not drama getting one. We're, like this is not Manny MUA getting canceled for being a bad friend. I'm not on that, I'm not on that bullshit. I always thought that was stupid and I still think it's stupid now. So that is where we are. Let me know down below what you guys think. Did you watch the video? Have you watched the series? Are you so over Gabby Hanna at this point? Let me know down below what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching. I will again have two more videos up this week about the other two videos she posted and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!